So there was some big news today out of Stanford University. We have been waiting for the results of their antibody test. It'll be the first random sample antibody test done here locally in the United States, which is key for us knowing when it is safe for us to go back and resume normal life. We had a chance today to study some of the top line results of that survey, and we want to share with you right now what that study means for you and for your family and our country's fight against coronavirus. First, a couple of things about Stanford individually. Stanford is rated the number six overall university in the country, uh, according to the annual survey that is done by U.S. News and World Report. And that puts the Cardinal ahead of several Ivy League schools, Johns Hopkins, Caltech, and others. Stanford is also rated the number four medical research institution in the country. So its credentials are globally recognized. You will not find better experts anywhere in America. Stanford set out recently to do the first random sample antibody test for SARS-2 coronavirus in the country in order to determine the virus's true infection and mortality rate, since most of the testing and data we currently have comes from the people in areas most immediately impacted by the virus, so we're constantly getting worst-case scenarios. Random sampling is necessary in order to produce a scientific survey that helps us to know how the virus may impact a community or country as a whole. The presence of antibodies means that a person has already been exposed to the virus and was never sick or recovered and is now immune. Either way, it's highly unlikely they can be infected or infect others any longer. It is vitally important to know how widespread the SARS-2 coronavirus antibodies are in determining how soon we can return to normal life safely. The Stanford study weighted prevalence of antibodies in SARS-2 coronavirus in a sample of 3,330 people adjusting for zip code, sex, race, ethnicity, etc. in Santa Clara County, California, just like you should for a scientific random sample called a serology test. Stanford found 2.49% to 4.16% of the people it randomly sampled had SARS-2 coronavirus antibodies. Santa Clara County has a population of 1.9 million people. If the mean prevalence suggested by the Stanford study is 3.33%, it would mean just over 63,000 residents in Santa Clara County have or had COVID-19. But as of Friday, April 17th, according to the California Department of Health, Only 1,833 people in Santa Clara County have confirmed positive for COVID-19. So based on the Stanford serology test, the true number of cases in Santa Clara County is 35 times greater than what has been confirmed through the Department of Health's COVID-19 testing. Further, the California Department of Health reports 70 people have perished due to COVID-19 in Santa Clara County. But the current inferred case fatality rate, that's 70 divided by 1,833, would sit at 3.8% of those who get the virus die. But based on the Stanford test, that case fatality rate plunges to just over 0.1%. That means the current inferred case fatality rate of COVID-19 in Santa Clara County is off by a factor of 38. If you extrapolate the mean prevalence of the Stanford study out to the rest of the country, again, using that mean number of 3.33%, it would mean nearly 11 million people in America have been infected with this virus. According to Johns Hopkins University, 33,398 people nationwide have perished. Well, with the Stanford infection rate, that would make the case fatality rate of the virus nationwide barely over 0.3%. Not 0.3% of the American people, but just 0.3% of those who have gotten the virus. By comparison... Last year's flu season, according to CDC, had a case fatality rate of 0.09%. So even the Stanford study confirms the SARS-2 coronavirus is deadlier than the flu, though not nearly as lethal as we originally feared when we shut down the country. 
To localize this study, let's take a look at my home state of Iowa. With a population of about 3 million people, a 3.33% prevalence mean or infection rate, which means 100,000 Iowans would have been infected or 43 times higher than the reported confirmed cases of 2,332. According to the Iowa Department of Public Health, 64 Iowans have died from the disease. That would mean, according to the Stanford Serology Survey, the case fatality rate in my home state is only 0.06%. And again, that is not 0.06% of Iowans, but 0.06% of Iowans who have had the virus. Conclusion. Stanford, one of America's elite universities, is reporting the virus is somewhere between 50 to 85 times more infectious than we currently report, but 50 to 85 times less lethal than we feared based on the random sample's margin for error. Furthermore, this lends credibility to my theory, based on research from CDC, that the SARS-2 coronavirus was already here wreaking havoc much of the flu pneumonia season because it's unlikely even that level of infection could happen in Santa Clara County just since mid-March. And if it has been here the whole time, the shutdowns were unnecessary to flatten the curve or slow the spread. Both of these efforts were futile because the horse had already left the barn. All we did was risk socioeconomic ruin after the fact. Finally, even if my theory of earlier infection is not true, at the very least, the Stanford survey confirms we are still short of herd immunity or the moment when so much of the population has been exposed and is now immune to an outbreak that you stop the contagion. And there is no way for us to achieve herd immunity under lockdown because we have kept too many of the healthy at home. Stanford's data confirms we must end these lockdowns immediately, either because it was already too late to stop the spread or we're making it worse by putting off achieving the herd immunity we need to get our way of life back. Thank you for watching this video. Please share it with as many and as often as you can over the next few days. This is the most important piece of data we have received in the battle against coronavirus yet.